Hey, what's up? I'm Rafael Di Furia, aka Rafi Di is me, and I am back at it again on another beautiful Friday night. Tonight's video is going to be out and about, so don't worry, I may be in the hat cave, my regular place where I normally sit down, just right over here. But before I get into this video, I wanted to give just a little bit of background information that I may not have made totally clear in the video. Originally, this video was just going to be me showing the train ride from Bolzano to Bologna, and just taking a train in Italy, but there ended up being a little bit of a twist to that, where my first train was delayed by so much that it made me actually miss my second train. And so this video kind of ended up turning into how to rectify that situation and just a little bit of taking trains in Italy just anyway in general. I recorded this I think about a month ago, I can't remember exactly the day, maybe a month and a half, because I had to go on a quick little trip for work, so that's why I didn't film anything in Bologna and the other area that I went to just because I didn't have time to do any sort of videos while I was down there. At some point I would like to go back to Bologna and show that in a video at some point, but anyway let's get into the video but before we get too much deeper if you would like to see more content like this about moving to Italy, Italian dual citizenship and living life abroad please be sure to subscribe with that notification bell turned on and if you could also give this video a like I'd really appreciate that and if you would like to help make more content like this possible on a monthly basis you can go to rafaeldifuria.com slash patreon or if you'd like to help out just once you can go to rafaeldifuria.com slash support but for real let's just get into the video already Hey, what's up? I'm Rafael Di Puri, aka Rafi Di is me, and I'm back at it on another beautiful Friday night. Tuesday night. Some night. <laughs> right now I'm in Bolzano, and I'm actually headed down a little bit south. I'm going down to the Veneto region. Kind of a semi-last second sort of thing. Been planning to go for a while, but finally, just uh, very recently, the ability to go actually became possible. So, yeah, uh, not sure how much I'm going to be showing or what I'm going to be showing. But uh, anyway, just wanted to bring you guys along for the ride. <laughs> so the first thing that I need to do actually is to validate my ticket. I have an electronic ticket, but this is just an example. If you were coming here with a paper ticket, what you would do is you take the ticket, insert it in the machine, that's it. If you're wondering if you did it correctly or not, you should see a little stamp that appears at the end of your ticket. Just also something important to know when you're traveling by train. So partense are the trains that are going to be leaving, departing, and then arrivi are the trains that are going to be arriving. So just make sure that whenever you're looking at the boards that you're looking at the right board. Also the destination that's on your ticket may not be the destination that you see on the board. So for example, in today in my case I am going to Bologna and I'm looking for train EC81. And crap, looking back at it now, it's going to be a half an hour late. Oh, yippee. Anyway, so it's important to take note of the train number and not just the destination that you're going to. The information on the board is going to have what type of train it is, the train number, then the destination of where it's going to arrive to, then the time that it's supposed to leave, if it's late, how late it's going to be, and then after that are all of the stops that it makes. So, I had to come early anyway because the only train from Medano to Bolzano that would have gotten me here early enough was gonna be an hour earlier than I planned leaving. I originally thought I was gonna be able to wait here just half an hour, but now it looks like, yeah, with that extra half hour on top. <laughs> hour and a half, but sometimes when you see a train that is already marked as late, a while before the train is actually supposed to come, then that could mean it's actually a bit later than what's going to be written in that moment. So let's see. I'm gonna keep my eyes open on the board and not go over to the not go over to the platform quite yet. Okay, so what do you do if your train is late and you have a connection and your train is going to be late for that connection? So I just waited in this long line and finally when I got to the front of the line, this uh, very nice uh, customer service assistant. I was able to ask her, what should I do? Do I need to change my ticket here? Or do I just wait till I get to Bologna? She just said, oh no, you just get on the train, go to Bologna and talk to the customer service there. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Um, <laughs> you can wait here a little bit longer and uh, just keep an eye on the, on the ticker board just to see if there's any updates because it went down to 25 minutes late and then now it's back to, to 30 minutes late but either way it's supposed to arrive at the same platform <sighs> well this is what happens in italy sometimes 
This video started out with no plan, but I guess I know uh, what the title of this video is gonna be now. And I was just filming today just to capture what's going on, but it looks like uh, something's going on. <laughs> I've always kind of wondered like what happens in this sort of situation, and I'm glad that there so seems to be something to do. I guess I'll find out when I get to Bologna. But also while I was waiting in the line, I just looked up just quickly on the internet what to do if your train is late. And I knew that passengers in Europe already have certain sets of rights. And so I was thinking maybe there's something about those rights that extends to train travel. And it seems as though it does. But I would say for sure, if your train is going to be late, make sure that you get a picture or video that shows the ticker board and shows that your train is going to be late. I don't know if that's gonna help me when I get to Bologna, but I think in case it's worthwhile having it. Even if, it, even if I don't need it, I would rather have it than not have it. But I only originally got it just because I was making this video. So two birds, one stone. While I'm waiting here, I may as well tell you guys about one trick that I use if I'm traveling around and if I want to have an idea of what platform I need to go to before I get to the station. It's not always a million percent correct, but it's usually like on the ball. So what you can do is you can type into Google your train number and the station that you're going to and then the word binario. So for example, today I wrote in Google EC81 Bolzano Binario. One of the first results took me to a website where you can see what the stops are, what the final destination is. So if you're going to a place that is not the final destination of your train, you can at least have an idea of what to look out for on the ticker board before you actually are leaving on your train. So it can help you to find the correct train that you need to get onto. My Bolzano video has already probably come out by the time this one comes out. And when I was talking about going on the platform, you have to go over to number four. One of the reasons why it's a little bit annoying to go over there is because you have to go downstairs upstairs so if you if you can't walk they do have elevators but I would personally prefer stairs to a train station elevator but that's just maybe me now the next thing that I'm thinking about is that the train ticket that I have is actually a higher value ticket than the train that's after that and actually I think the three trains after that so I'm wondering if it might be possible that I might be getting a partial refund it's a difference of about four euros so let's see I mean if I don't get the refund, I can't say I'm too bothered about it as long as I'm getting there. But, hey, four euros is four euros. That's a kebab. <laughs> or a couple pieces of pizza, some chocolate. There's a bit that you could do for four euros. Maybe possible future video, what can you buy for four euros? Or maybe five euros. If you guys would be interested to see a video like that, let me know. So it seems like there's a train before my train, and it's five minutes until my train to Bologna is actually supposed to be here. If you don't speak Italian, you wouldn't necessarily get the updates that they're making, because they have been saying it's going to be coming late, it's going to be coming late. They haven't announced anything about changing the platform, but I don't think the platform will change. I've got a couple of minutes before noon, and this train is actually supposed to be leaving right now. Because if, if my train is leaving late, then it should be leaving at 12.01. But this train here is also supposed to be leaving at 12.01, so let's see. Well, leaving right now, so 12.01. This is when my train, according to the ticker board, with the expected delay should have been leaving, but uh, yeah, I'm still here, <laughs> and that train isn't. <laughs> At this point, there's for sure no way that I'm gonna be able to make that connection in Bologna. Before I would have had 27 minutes to change, but now it's for sure gonna be more than a half an hour late. And on that website that I was mentioning, the expected platform to arrive is gonna be platform 10, but I have to leave from platform three. So I'm assuming especially, I've never been to Bologna before, but from what videos I've seen about it and how big it's supposed to be, I doubt there's any way that even if I had like a 25 minute delay where it would have left a two minute window to get from one train to the other, no way I'm getting from 10 to three that quickly. And they just updated the board, so 35 minutes late. Ain't no way I'm making that transfer. It's a little annoying, especially since I didn't sleep last night and I was really looking forward to getting to where I'm staying as soon as possible. Like I really only slept maybe an hour and a half and nowhere near enough, but I think my train is coming over. It is here. <laughs> cool. I just have to find my place now. Alright, so 
I'm on the train. Those are some of the private cabins back there. And I listed that my car was supposed to be here, but I'm not sure exactly where. So I uh, made it on. It's gonna be late, but uh, I'm on. The last thing the last thing is to make the house So I gotta say, so far, the train ride is actually pretty comfortable. A lot of people on this train have a need of coffee, and I know that this train happens to have a restaurant car, so I heard it's in this direction, so I'm gonna go check it out, see if I can find it. Uh, but one thing that I was saying earlier about the electronic ticket, this train that I'm on right now originated in Germany. This is actually a German train, so the electronic ticket that I had that I would normally be able to use on some trains wasn't accepted. But luckily, I had that paper ticket with me, and I already validated it, so that saved my butt completely. I would say the electronic tickets are a lot more convenient. But good to have the paper card is back. curious to see anyway also what kind of food they have on a train. I've never actually had a full meal on a train like this before. Anyway, I'll show you a little bit inside. but I guess I really want a German train because it came with coffee creamers. <laughs> I think the last time I saw coffee creamers, I was still back in the States. But anyway, right now we're stopped in uh, Verona. 
at the Porta Nuova, the main station here. And so we have to wait a few minutes and then we'll be going on to Bologna. But anyway, I'm going to enjoy my creamless espresso and uh, if there's anything else, I'll, I'll keep on updating you guys. Otherwise, I guess I'll see you next in uh, Bologna. Cheers. Oh yeah, that's German coffee. Oh God. I think I understand why they have the creamer now. get a German to do an Italian's job. And it would seem as though now it is a not only a dining car, but a private dining car. It may be a great day, but it is beautiful to be able to sit here right in the spot and look out over everything. This was worth the price of admission. Even if I run into a few hiccups in Bologna, I'll be okay. So we're just pulling into Bologna right now, and uh, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> oh god, anyway, let's see, wish me luck, although by the time this goes off, it'll be, whatever, wish me luck anyway. <laughs> I'm only a half hour late in the end instead of like 40 something minutes. I'm gonna run because I was originally supposed to have 27 minutes and I'm gonna see if I can make my original train. If I can make it then oh, that'll be a blessing. I'm not sure totally what platform is on. I'm, I have a rough idea and I hope I'm headed in the right direction. But let's see. Here the train station is another like Bolzano where it's up and down, up and down, and uh, my train wasn't even listed, but I was going to the platform where it was supposed to be, and so I think I must have missed it by just a couple of minutes. I think I must have just barely missed it because there was a train kind of just pulling away. So, whatever, I'm going to go to the uh, ticket office and see if I can get this all fixed. So, <laughs> right now I'm waiting in a service line. They have a lot of train customer service support, kind of just people just walking around. So it's actually really nice, very helpful. One of the customer support told me to get into this line right here, and let's see, maybe I uh, will have a little extra luck, but hey, after that ride, I'm in a good mood. Okay, so I have to say that was pretty painless. They were very nice about it. The woman was said, I'm so sorry that you missed it. Um, and actually, from the time that I arrived and I had to wait in line, I missed two trains to get to where I'm going. So now I have to wait an hour. And thankfully, they actually changed the ticket for me for free. They just, uh, what they did was they, she wrote down the information. What she did was she wrote down the information of the next train. And then also she put stamps on it to let them know that they're the ones who goofed up in this case. So yeah, pretty cool. Mad respect. So. I've got an hour here in Bologna, and there's part of me that wants to just go look for pasta bolognese, but I don't think I quite have enough time, and I think I'd rather stay here at the uh, train station just to make life easier. But maybe another time I'll, I'll come here and I'll, I'll satisfy that craving of pasta bolognese. <laughs> Well, Toto, we sure ain't in Alto Adige anymore. That's for sure, without a doubt. I'll go out front a little bit just to show you guys a little something. I've never been here before and it's, uh, I have to say, it's actually not that hard to get around and it's laid out quite logically if you've been around Italian train stations before, so <laughs> not hard to figure out. Oh, they have a supermarket over here.
though just from first impressions I can't say it feels like there's a lot in this area maybe I'm completely wrong and maybe I'm like really close to the tourist areas but from just being right here it doesn't feel like there's so much and I don't really feel like going so far away so I think I'm just gonna make life easy go back to the train station maybe find a place where I can get a coffee or something and just try to enjoy this uh, hour break in between this is all part of traveling in Italy you have to be willing to accept there's a very high possibility or you could even say probability that your train actually could be late or delayed or canceled and you have to be willing to just roll with that and if you don't let that get in the way of your trip you can enjoy the time a bit more and it's just going to be more enjoyable. So there's this little uh, cafe back here that I decided to check out, but I was also curious and wanted to compare the prices to where I live up in Merano and Alto Adige. And there's actually a pretty big price difference. For example, here for just a single shot of espresso is 120. Where I live, it can be anywhere from 150 to 380, depending on where you go. And for a cappuccino here was like two euros. Where I live, normally, I guess it would be around 280 to five euros. It really depends on where you go. If it's like a kind of simple place, or if it's more of a kind of upscale kind of place. My train just came up on the board, so I'm gonna head up over to the train and uh, just wait over there. It's, I've got quite a while to wait, but at this point, I really don't mind. I'd rather be waiting at the platform than someplace else and miss another train, and then this time I actually have to pay for it. It's an interesting experience just to see different part of Italy. I have different train stations, different city, although even though I'm not really seeing the city, <laughs> not getting to actually fully experience it because I've heard some like cool things about the city but from what I saw in front of the train station yeah I don't know if it would quite live up to that but one thing that I for sure learned in my years abroad is don't judge a city by its train station and so they have coffee right here behind me in a machine 70 cents 80 cents for other types of drinks <laughs> I mean like I mean having lived in Alto Adige for a little while now I'm kind of really shocked to see those prices so I on the train, I hope. The problem is, is that the number written on the train is different than the number that's written on the uh, board. But this train seems to be leaving at the time that it's supposed to be leaving. But actually, as somebody who works for the train company, she checked on some application on her phone. She said, yeah, this is the train. So I'm like, okay, whatever. I'll take it and cross my fingers. Hope I get to the right place. Since it's a pretty empty train though, and I don't technically have a reservation anymore, I'm just gonna pick a random seat and hope for the best. So the conductor just came around, checked the ticket, and everything's good. Nothing to think about. I had to just, just quickly explain to him that it was stamped because I came in on a late train, and so everything's fine. Exciting. Getting to see a, another little part of the country. Although I'm seeing it backwards, so uh, yeah. And I don't have such a big window, it's pretty small, so I can't really see anything because I'm looking basically in this direction. <laughs> such a beautiful view, I know. Wow. But you know, forwards or backwards, this is a beautiful country and I always have to pinch myself that I'm actually finally here after all these years. I'm blessed and I mean, okay, I know I've been here for two years, but like, I haven't been out of Alto Adige that much. You know, from my videos, there's a lot of the Austrian German influence and, and to actually be in an area where it's majority Italian speaking and actually be in an Italian area is quite nice. And even though Alto Adige is not the most Italian, I'm so grateful to be living there. Anyway, I think I'm gonna wrap this video up for today right here. So anyway, I think that's where I'm gonna wrap things up for today. And if you have any questions about anything to do with more daily Italian dual citizenship and more, feel free to leave that down in the comment section below. And of course, be sure to subscribe for more content like this. And if you could also give this video a like, I'd really appreciate it as it does help out the channel. And then also, if you're wanting to help out the channel in another way, feel free to share this video with your friends on social media, WhatsApp, email, however you guys keep in contact. And if you'd like to help make videos like this possible on a monthly basis, you can go to rafaeldefoya.com slash Patreon. And thank you so much to all my monthly patrons for helping to make videos like this possible. Really, you guys make a huge difference to make this possible. So thank you so much. And if you would also like to help out in making more videos like this possible on a monthly basis you can go to rafaeldefoodia.com slash patreon but if you'd like to help out just once you can go to rafaeldefoodia.com slash support and of course as always thank you for joining me on another beautiful tuesday slash friday night <laughs> of course i'm rafael de Furia, aka rafi d is me and of course as always i'm rafael de Furia, aka rafi d is me thanks so much for watching and i look forward to seeing you all next time later